So narrow windrow burning is the practice of concentrating the weed seed bearing chaff fraction along with the straw fraction during harvest into a windrow that's about five to six hundred millimetres wide, similar to this windrow that we're standing right next to here. Now after harvest that windrow is left in place until the following autumn when the burning restrictions are lifted and then the farmer comes back, burns those windrows, hopefully right to the soil surface, which is obviously where the weed seeds are going to be lying after that period of time, to get a, an effective weed seed kill. Now our studies over several years have shown that we can pretty much guarantee getting 99% of both annual ryegrass and wild radish seed destruction through an effective narrow windrow burn. Now this is effective in both canola, pulse crop or cereal crop stubbles. In this situation here, um, we've got a really good scenario occurring where we've got a nice cross breeze that's just allowing the fire to burn slowly along the windrow. A slow burn means a lot hotter burn over a longer period of time. The hotter the, the burn, the longer it occurs for, the greater the chances of getting a complete weed seed kill. Um, we know that we will get very high levels of weed seed destruction if we get temperatures in excess of 400 degrees Celsius. With narrow windrow burning, the relatively easy part is setting the windrows up at harvest. It's quite easy to get that width right to get the material concentrated. The difficult part, but also the crucial part, is actually getting those windrows to burn right to the soil surface. That's where the weed seeds are, and this is what you want to see. You want to see nothing but burnt material on the soil surface, because then you know that you've got the heat, you've got the fire, down to where the weed seeds are in autumn at this time of year, guaranteeing that you get the best possible scenario for killing those weed seeds that are there. Our studies have shown that if we get 400 degrees Celsius plus for at least 30 seconds, we will kill wild radish seed that's on the soil surface. If we get that same heat um, for only 10 seconds, we can guarantee we'll kill annual ryegrass seed that's present on the soil surface. Uh, we also have learnt through our research that uh, Canola stubbles like this one will actually burn the hottest compared to pulse stubbles or cereal stubbles. Uh, and in fact, pulse and canola stubbles are probably the ones that you really want to focus on in terms of trying to get a very good weed seed destruction or weed seed kill with your narrow windrow burning treatments. If you can get it to work in cereal stubbles, that's a bonus, but the recommendation really should, to be, should be to focus this technique on non-cereal stubbles. For any, any growers who are just taking on windrow burning or want to have a go at windrow burning for the first time, then really they should be starting with canola or pulse stubbles. They're probably the easiest and the safest to use. As you can see around me here, there is not a lot of material left outside of the windrow that can potentially carry a fire. So there's a lot lower fire risk associated with burning narrow windrows in canola stubbles. And the same goes for, for pulse crop stubbles. So, Definitely this is the scenario that you first want to try when you want to have a go at narrow windrow burning.